more and more nuclear material is moved from one place to another within the United States each year. The responsibility for the safety and security of these nuclear material shipments rests with various U.S. government agencies. The Energy Research and Development Administration, ERDA, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, and of course, the Department of Defense. ERDA, which this film is all about, and the NRC, were formed in January 1975 when the old Atomic Energy Commission was reorganized. ERDA is responsible for government-owned special nuclear material in quantities which have potential weapon applications. The events of the past several years, civil unrest, hijackings, bombings, and other terrorist activities, both worldwide and here in the United States, have increased the concern for the security of nuclear material shipments. The system that has come out of all of this is a good one and is considered effective enough to cover almost all contingencies. The program does recognize, however, that an aggressor force that is well enough motivated, manned and equipped can challenge even the best planned system. Because of this, ERDA has asked for the help of state law enforcement agencies across the country as a kind of first line of defense in emergency situations. To understand what may be requested of you in an emergency, some background on the ERDA organization, program, equipment and tactics is necessary. Because of the amount of material moved and many years of experience in weapons transport, the Albuquerque Operations Office was selected as the organization responsible for all aspects of the transportation of strategic quantities of government-owned special nuclear material. These, or larger amounts of material, alone or in combination, are considered strategic quantities and must be moved within the ERDA single manager system. To give you an idea of how much material is involved, two kilograms, four and one half pounds, of plutonium would be about the size of a pack of cigarettes. For safety protection, it is of course packaged in a much larger container. The Transportation Safeguards Division, a part of the Albuquerque Operations Office, has the primary responsibility for both transportation and protection of special nuclear material. The technical support branch provides electronic system engineering support and staffs and operates CECOM, a nationwide high frequency radio system which provides for constant communications with shipments throughout the country. This branch also provides liaison with state law enforcement agencies. The shipment planning branch coordinates all movements. Requests for movement of material are consolidated, the means of transportation is determined, and the requirement is passed on to the safeguards branch. This branch handles the actual movement of the special nuclear material. Its responsibilities also include the administration and training of the ERTA courier force, which accompanies all shipments of special nuclear material which fall within the strategic quantities category. Courier forces are stationed at several locations across the country. The ATMX cars were designed specifically for the movement of special nuclear material. They are very heavy, have a low center of gravity, double locking couplers, and inwardly sloping ends to reduce car damage in the event of a collision and to prevent the propagation of an explosion from one car to the next. These features combined with the maximum 35 mile an hour speed makes it almost inconceivable that they would be involved in an accident of sufficient force to rupture the car and expose the material. The escort coaches which accompany the train are fully self-contained with sleeping quarters, kitchen facilities and extensive communications equipment. The car is armored to help protect the crew and equipment in the event of an attack. Vans of this type, called ponies, are used to transport small quantities of material that do not fit into the strategic quantities category. Occasionally, because of classification or sensitivity, courier service is required on these shipments also. By far, the most common method of moving strategic quantities of special nuclear material is the courier-escorted tractor-trailer rig. ERDA owns a large fleet of these tractor trailers. The tractors are armored and equipped with communications gear. 
The trailer resembles a large standard freight trailer on the outside. Inside, it is practically a rolling vault. The inner compartment, where the cargo is stowed, provides protection to the shipment in an accident and protection from an overt attack as well. A typical convoy consists of the tractor trailer and one or more escorting vehicles. Each vehicle is manned by three couriers. The escort can be either a carry-all or a tactical escort vehicle. The tactical escort vehicle uses a typical recreational vehicle body. It is armored and equipped with communications gear, weapons, ammunition, sleeping quarters and cooking facilities. Both vehicles are relatively low profile. Equipment in each of the convoy vehicles includes HF radio gear for digital and voice communications with CECOM via the relay sites. The HF gear for communications within the convoy. Portable radios and pagers for use when courier personnel are away from their vehicles at fueling or food stops. Each courier has his own 357 Magnum sidearm and the vehicles are stocked with M16 rifles, 12 gauge shotguns, and 40 millimeter grenade launchers. Other equipment includes radiation detection instruments, foul weather gear, gas masks. Erder courier drivers are well trained and must continue to demonstrate driving proficiency throughout their career. Unsafe or illegal driving is not tolerated. If the tractor driver is stopped by a law enforcement officer for any reason, a unique problem is raised. Since the tractor is armored, the couriers have been instructed not to open the cab door until they are absolutely sure that security can be maintained. To handle this situation, the courier will display his picture identification card at the window and repeat the following message over the vehicle's public address system. I'm a federal officer with the Energy Research and Development Administration in custody of sensitive material. I'm not permitted to open the door of this vehicle. I will remain stopped while you contact my supervisor in the escort vehicle to the rear. The escort vehicles operate close enough to the tractor trailer to be on the scene by the time the truck is stopped. When the supervisor has identified the officer, the couriers and the truck will dismount if necessary. Erta couriers are extensively trained and must meet high medical fitness standards, including mental and emotional stability for annual certification under a human reliability program. Each courier must pass the Erta driver school for all types of vehicles. He must qualify quarterly with his personal sidearm and other assigned weapons. Couriers are authorized by the Atomic Energy Act to carry firearms, including automatic weapons, in the normal pursuit of their jobs nationwide. Basic courier training is a six weeks course, which is followed by a year of on-the-job training, then two weeks of advanced training. With this as a background, let's look at situations that could require your help. In the first instance, if communications with the convoy is lost, or if a convoy does not report in at a specified time, the state police in the area would be asked to begin a search for the missing vehicles. While in most cases this is not a true emergency, it must be treated as if it were until proved otherwise. In the event of a genuine emergency, such as an armed attack on the convoy, the following actions would take place. One of the couriers would activate the emergency switch on the control panel. The digital message would be transmitted via relay to CECOM Control Center in Albuquerque. CECOM Control will react to the emergency message by notifying IRTA management and calling the predetermined state law enforcement agency in the state where the shipment is located. The FBI and other government agencies would then be notified. Basically, IRTA is requesting state law enforcement agencies to provide assistance from available forces in seven categories which do not require special training or equipment. However, if the particular state has specially trained forces, such as SWAT or TACT teams, special weapons or equipment, such as all-purpose vehicles or aircraft, their use in such an emergency may be requested. The first officer on the scene should join with one of the couriers to establish a joint command post. 
This will enhance friend-foe identification. CECOM control will keep an open telephone line to state headquarters. The officer at the scene will be given a handy talkie radio so that he will have communications with other couriers on the scene. And he will also have radio communications via his car radio with his own headquarters. The second area of assistance would be to set up roadblocks around the emergency site to contain the attackers and prevent innocent bystanders from becoming involved in a possible shooting situation. Third, Erta requests that the on-scene state officer direct the deployment and activities of any other law enforcement personnel, including sheriffs and city police, as they arrive on the scene. Fourth, the officers on the scene may be asked to provide additional firepower at the request of the courier in charge. Fifth, the officer at the scene should request medical assistance when and as necessary. And sixth, help secure the area until the convoy is regrouped and ready to travel. If the special nuclear material is lost to the attackers, the FBI has responsibility and assumes control of the recovery operation. You may also be asked to assist them in their operations. Among the other resources the FBI has available in a situation of this type is IRTA's NEST, or Nuclear Emergency Search Team. NEST teams have equipment which can locate nuclear material. The situations which have been suggested here have not happened, not yet anyway, but they could. And if they do, the terrorist group trying to grab nuclear material will be well prepared and deadly serious. The organizations which respond to a threat of this kind must be equally serious and determined if we are to prevent nuclear blackmail or large-scale loss of life and property. As members of a state law enforcement agency, you have significant roles to play in helping to maintain control of special nuclear material. Your quick response in an emergency can materially reduce the threats of radical and dissident groups.